So I want to introduce you to Rafael Marcus de Moraes, who is the co-author on the story that we just wrote about Isabel dos Santos of Angola. Rafael is an esteemed investigative reporter in Angola. He has been doggedly pursuing and writing about human rights abuses and corruption in Angola for a long time. Talk a little bit about this case that these generals were suing you in, in uh, Portugal. What, what happened? Since 92, I have been reporting on the Diamond areas. The human rights abuses in that region are just uh, indescribable. The, the levels of violence, the horrendous crimes, uh, these, um, the companies belonging to these generals undertake both uh, private security companies and mining companies. They do business with oil companies. For instance, one of the companies I've been accusing serves uh, U.S. multinationals uh, based in Angola. So they have all those perks and they know how to hire uh, public relations companies uh, to give them a proper image of uh, proper business people. And these are individuals on active duty. And they cannot be business people at the same time well, yeah. under Angolan legislation and uh, be negotiating with the state and having stakes in the diamond business and controlling the private security and even transferring assets from the army, from the police to their own companies. So let's talk a little bit about the amount of time that you spent in, in gathering the documents that helped to reach some of the conclusions that we did in the article about Isabel Dos Santos' $3 billion fortune. I mean, you told me you spent something like two years just gathering the, the, the Daily Journal, the, excuse me, the Daily Gazette articles. How did you do that? Uh, trying to set up, establish a database of information that would enable me to work on corruption issues for quite a long time because I knew the moment the authorities knew uh, these articles were coming out, they would shut down all the state institutions uh, that could make these documents available. Mm -hmm. I have amassed documents to write uh, on the presidential family, on um, it's not just uh, the daughter Isabel, but there are other children as well, his sister, that have been doing business uh, on the same uh, situation. Uh, in the same, more or less the same scale, mm -hmm. and using the very same procedures, uh, the approvals by the Council of Ministers through the presidential decrees and so forth in the old sector, diamonds, and many other sectors of uh, Angola's political economy that is essentially now split between the presidential family a number of generals and other government officials. What's the reaction been like uh, among people in Angola since the article came out? It has been tremendous because there have been several uh, discussions on the social media and that's why also the government is trying to prevent. Just to give you an idea, the pro-government uh, websites, there is what is called the Internet Brigade for the government that essentially are on the ready to attack those who criticize the government through the social networks. Mm -hmm. And uh, they doctored a passport, an American passport, putting my picture and my data. But they forgot to take the bottom name of uh, probably a U.S. citizen who happens to be a woman. Oh, no! And, <laughs> <laughs> and then they uh, put it up on the website? Jennifer Shaw. <laughs> so they have my name on the passport and then... Jennifer Shaw at the bottom. <laughs> uh, but these things, and again, uh, articles have been written on how Forbes' uh, article contradicts itself. This is a former Marxist Leninist regime that is very much um, skilled at very crude propaganda. So there has been a lot of buzz in the past 24 hours on this article. But essentially, the convergence is that. Uh, what Forbes has published is nothing new in Angola. Yeah. These are things we've always known all along, right. but no one had the ability to bring it together and give uh, the space that Forbes has given to it.